Coming up on MCTV this week. The physical education department makes some changes and we see how a little parasite can affect a person. This week starts now. Welcome to MCTV This Week with Jane Simpkins, I'm Haley Turner. What's in a name? Well, for the kinesiology department, a lot. Gabby Shirley has more. The physical education department has changed its name to kinesiology and added a new exercise science major. The name change is not something that is limited to our campus. There is a round, um, going around a big name change in our department and um, nationally, right? Um, departments are changing their names to kinesiology, the study of movement, and then it has a variety of tracks underneath it. For example, exercise science and physical education. The process of reorganizing the major started three years ago, which included hiring assistant professor Dr. Sean Shum. So there's a broad area of careers and options available for, for people after graduation. Uh, so it can be almost anything related to, um, you know, personal training or sports or exercise, um, and even if you choose the right kind of electives, you can even go on in, into careers in the health field. Jem hopes the changes will have a positive effect for the college as a whole and for the majors. I would also hope that it can better prepare uh, some of the students who are interested in exercise science for careers in that general area, uh, better prepare them than maybe we were able to in the past before we offered this major. For more information on the exercise science major, visit www.monmouthcollege.edu slash academics slash kinesiology. For MCTV, I'm Gabby Shirley. The Helen R. Hicks Scholarship Fund has been established through a $125,000 estate gift made by the late Helen Hicks. The 1943 Monmouth grad was an economics major and mathematics minor and took part in various organizations on campus, including Pi Beta Phi and the newspaper. Hicks requested that the scholarship would go to students like her who excel in academics, display leadership abilities, have interest in accounting or business, and are in financial need. Uh, providing the scholarship funds, they benefited from scholarships themselves and um, had you know, a good experience here at Monmouth. Often they look back at their college experience and say, you know, that really changed my life. It made me um, have a wonderful career. and and so they want to give back to the institution and they're able to do that uh, by setting up a scholarship to help current students. The scholarship funds will be distributed within the year. Can a small parasite really affect someone's behavior? Dr. Kevin D. Lafferty, a marine ecologist for the U.S. Geological Survey at the Channel Islands Field Station spoke on how some parasites manipulate the behavior of their hosts, even in human beings. His lecture was a part of the McMullen Biology Lecture Series. I hope that they'll just have a, a broader appreciation that you know we share the planet with a lot of things that we don't normally think about called parasites and they're actually really common and maybe in some cases are important and influence our daily lives. We're all pretty much in the same boat I think parasites don't distinguish whether they're in a fish or a human. The, Mc the McMullen Lecture Series was established in honor of Dr. Donald McMullen, a professor in biology at Monmouth College from 1928 to 1938. Once again this year, Mortarboard is sponsoring the last lecture series. Dr. Simon Cordery of the History Department gave the first lecture. Cordery spoke about how music is very important to life and history. If I had a main point, it was take advantage of opportunities as they present themselves and make the most out of life, which is really cliched and boring, but I think that you have to have fun as well. This is the first of a three-series event in the Morgan Room of Polling Hall. Tomorrow night at 6, Dr. Dick Dobson will give his last lecture. Taking a look at some events on campus this week, tonight ASAP and ZBT team up for an up coffee house at 9 p.m. in the underground. Friday at 7, Alpha Z hosts their annual Z-Man competition. Saturday, the annual Scots Connection Conference will be held at 11 a.m. Contact the Wackerly Career Center if you are interested in attending. Coming up in sports after the break. Women's basketball team snagged the two seed last week in the Midwest Conference Tournament. We've got the story next.
Welcome back. The women's basketball team clinched their second straight Midwest Conference tournament berth with a 75-57 win over Illinois College last Wednesday. Late in the first half, the Scots went up by 11 thanks to a couple Zipper of Williams free throws and led a 35-28 at the half. Teams matched buckets for the first nine minutes of the second half until Williams canned two more charity tosses to spark a 10-0 run. Haley Jones would finish with 22 and Williams added 18 with Lauren Kellen putting up 10 off the bench. Scots will travel to Wisconsin to kick off the tournament on Friday. Now the men also faced off against IC last Wednesday. Fighting Scots got off to a slow start in the first half, trailing 25 to 15. But behind solid play of Cody Hillier and Clinton Bollinger, the Scots went on a 13 to nothing run to take the lead going into halftime. In the second half, the Scots relied on the tray ball from Kendall Cox to keep the lead. The Scots were able to fend off a late charge by the Blue Boys and hold on for a 67-64 victory. Uh, I think the key factor probably had to be our defense in the second half. We uh, started to slow them down a little bit and uh, hit some big shots in the second half. We got behind early and just turned the ball over a lot, a lot of bad turnovers, and then we slowed that down in the second half. The men finished their season with a two-game win streak with a win last Saturday over Knox. Now, after a dominating performance in conference play last season, MC Softball is looking for a repeat in 2012. With their opener just three weeks away, MC Softball is without last season's starting shortstop and first baseman. But Coach Goddard is confident in his replacements. Going in, uh, we've lost some key players, but th we've had players available to replace them. So we, this team should be comparable to last year's team. With only one blemish on their conference record last year, the Scots look to improve on last season's 12-1 mark. Now, will we be dominant through the conference? Can't predict that, but uh, we're looking forward to uh, having the uh, conference championship at Monmouth. Much of the starting lineup will be returning for the Scots, including Lauren Bergstresser, who led the team in batting average at 403, and Brooke Tuhill just behind her at 393. Our overall team goal is to win the conference and then get to the NCAA bid. Scots will kick off their season on their spring trip down to Claremont, Florida, and that'll be March 12th. We'll be back in just a second. Here are your scores for this week. Last Friday, ASAP tried to tap students' bunny bones. So Wells Theater filled with over 150 students to see comedian Arvin Mitchell. In 2003, Mitchell got his big break as a featured comedian on BET and offered some advice for those who are looking to get into comedy. You know, I have a friend, who, he said he wanted to start doing comedy probably eight years ago or more, and he's still writing, but he hasn't been on stage. So you have to write and get on stage. I really, really had a good time. I'm not just saying it. I think you could tell. Up next for ASAP is an after hours carnival on the 29th from 9 to 11.30 in Scotland Yard. And that's MCTV This Week. I'm Ross Donovan. And I'm Jane Simpkins. Thanks for showing up this week and be sure to tune in next week for another edition of MCTV. And I'm Haley Turner. You can also catch us on the web by going to monmouthcollege.edu slash MCTV. See you next time.